Welcome to Dave's Workshop, and Garden Railway. Please share this video to spread the joy of model engines. Don't forget to like, and subscribe for more videos. 30 years ago, I bought the Edgar T. Westbury, Whippet, Castings and Parts set, from Woking Precision Models in the UK. Included with the castings, were bar stock for bearings, toughnel rod for insulators, timing gears, piston rings, valve springs, and a sparking plug. I adapted my Emco Uni Mat 3 lathe with riser blocks and a toothed belt drive to be able to swing a 7-inch diameter faceplate. To be able to turn the main casting. I made a good start on the project, machining much of the main casting, roughing out the crankshaft, but missed drilling the oil hole, machining the gear case, the cylinder head cover, and the cylinder head, partially. Many small parts were completed, mainly bearings, to a good accuracy. The project came unstuck back then when the camshaft became horribly bent during case hardening, and the project was abandoned. The cylinder head fixing holes had already been drilled in the wrong position by this time too, a well-known problem with the whippet. I foolishly joined some new Facebook groups concerned with model engine building, and became enthused with continuing on with the project. Here is the original box, tucked away under the workbench, and then dragged out into the light of day. What better place to start, than with the ill-fated camshaft? See that? MSCH. Mild steel, case hardened. I won't be doing that again. I will make it two-piece, out of silver steel, or drill rod. And, harden the cam section independently. 5 16 inch bar in the collet chuck. Back end all turned, threaded, and the 10 degree taper for the timing gear. Turning the 5 8 inch cams piece, already mounted on a brass mandrel. The cams piece, removed from the mandrel, and loctited to the camshaft, for cam profiling. The drawings showing how to make the cam profiling turning jig. I made mine 30 years ago. The drawings showing how to profile turn the flanks of the cams. The jig set up between centers, and cuts having been taken. Generating the base circle diameter, by moving the job round in small increments. The base circle is finish filed and polished later. Here is the division plate with the engine timing etched on. I made this when I had good eyesight. Here is the roughed out base circle of the first cam. My trusty Loctite that I use to attach items to mandrels for machining, it's highly recommended for when normal super glue won't do. I added increments to the division plate for the second base circle. Both base circles have been roughed out. The homemade radius gauge for the exhaust cam. A one quarter inch hole was drilled and reamed, and the excess filed away. The exhaust cam is complete, having been filed and polished. The cam nose has been finished profiled. Checking the nose with the radius gauge. The inlet cam nose now needs profiling. Here is a hugely sped up clip of me finishing the exhaust cam. Filing, and polishing and using the radius gauge on the cam nose. While the clip is playing, here is some more information about the project. The hardening of the cams went well with no noticeable distortion. I quenched the cam piece in oil rather than water to cushion the shock a little, the cams still hardened nicely. There are some, now, well-known errors with the whippet, castings and drawings. I will go through them as they are uncovered. I did use case hardening for other parts of the engine. It is a nice process, of heating the part to red heat, and dipping into a carbon-rich powder. Repeating this to build up the required depth. This builds up a carbon-rich area on the surface of the low-carbon steel. Hardening it, is the same as with silver steel, heat to bright red heat, and then quench in water or oil. This gives a hard, case, to the workpiece with the interior still soft. The case hardening compound I used is called Case Enit, with a K, which I bought 30 years ago, the tin recently rusted out, 
so I repacked it in a suitable plastic container. I have a Sievit propane torch handle set with many different sized burners, and two cyclone burners for it too. I use barbecue LPG gas as the fuel. I am also using a cheap eBay torch, that fits onto the ubiquitous 220 gram butane can, that I use for my locos. This is great for small jobs, and can reach high temperatures. The timing gears supplied with the kit are 7 30 seconds inch wide rather than the 1 quarter inch that the drawings specify. The large brass camshaft gear required lots of reworking to get it to sit in the correct plane for alignment with the steel idler gear. As the width was reduced, I wanted full engagement. We will see this later on. I stuck with the cast flywheel, but it was not a nice casting. It was very hard in places, and there was not enough material to achieve the internal features detailed on the drawing. I bushed it with brass to get the required length of the 10 degree locating taper. The cams piece has been removed from the camshaft and hardened, but quenched in oil rather than water. Loctited together for the final time. The running faces have been given a light polishing. Here's a show and tell of fitting the camshaft to the main body. The bearings had been turned many years ago, along with the brass camshaft gear. All fitted nicely. Looking at the top of the casting, you can see the out of position cylinder head holes, they are at the front. But, these will be plugged and re drilled. The front flange camshaft bearing will require much reducing before the main bearing housing can possibly fit. The exhaust and inlet positions have been marked on the casting so that I don't forget. The positions are changeable early on, before the camshaft is made, and the cylinder head completed. Most versions of Whippet appear to have this configuration. The valve liners and seats are all done, made and fitted years ago. The valves too, are finished. I can't remember who made them, or if they came with the kit. They are nicely turned from stainless steel. Continuing with the roughed out crank shaft. The main shaft has been turned to size. And now the job is being supported with the fixed steady for the turning of the flywheel engagement taper. The 1 quarter inch BSF thread has been cut with a die. The crankshaft is now reversed in a fixture in the four jaw chuck to turn down the crank pin for sleeving. 3 8 inch silver steel sleeve loctited onto the crank pin. Set up in the bench drill for drilling the oil hole. This had originally been done incorrectly, with the drill breaking out where it ought not to. It did not go exactly to plan this time either, but it was better. Milling out the sides of the crank to make the counterweight. Generating the 15 degree angled side using my favorite step by step method. You can see the original, now plugged, misdrilling just above the central hole. Milling the second side. Roughing out the camshaft follower. Halfway there. Threaded 1 quarter inch BSF. Finish turned. The 3 16 inch driver slot has been milled. Milling out the sides to make the counterweight. Milling complete, and oil hole drilled. This is driven by the crank, and drives the timing gears. That's the oil hole, straight down the middle. This previously finished front camshaft bearing needed a lot milling off each of its four sides in order to be able to fit the main bearing housing. Here it is, reduced until it just fits. The valves are in position too. Just a whisker of clearance. The finished bearing. All the turning was done 30 years ago. A lovely bronze casting. Oil hole at the top. Crankshaft in place too. The screw holes have been drilled in the main bearing housing. The nasty flywheel casting was a shocker. But, I was determined to push through with it. 
There's a distinct lack of material inside there. It will need bushing to get enough crankshaft taper engagement. The exterior is roughed out. I made a brass bush for the flywheel. Here I am checking the length of the taper engagement as I bore the taper. Bush loctited in position. The washer recess has been counterbored in the front of the flywheel. On the mandrel for finish machining, and generating the starter cord pulley V. I had to make sure to clamp against the bush only and not the cast iron, or I could break the bond. I used the compound slide to generate the V groove. Finished flywheel, crankshaft, and main bearing housing. The flywheel fits in the correct position. Here's the drawing for the crankshaft follower driver stud. This piece will be case hardened. Here it is, before the case hardening. Here I am, heating up the mild steel driver stud to bright red heat, before dipping it into the case hardening compound. I tried to keep the threads out of the compound. Only one pass through the compound is shown here. But I actually gave it two. And the whole lot unfortunately got covered in the case hardening compound. A dip from red heat into cold water gets rid of all the compound residue. This isn't shown. Here I am heating the driver stud back up to bright red heat. And then plunging into cold water for hardening. I always test a job after hardening with a needle file, it just slides over the surface, like on glass, you can hear the hardness. Here is the driver stud after hardening. Crankshaft, driver stud, and follower. The body casting, has been set up again on the original faceplate, with the original angle plate, for skimming the front face to size. Imagine how this looked on my Emco Uni Mat 3 lathe. This required slow turning. Quite a bit of material needed removing. The faceplate bolted on to a spindle adapter for the Uni Mat 3 lathe. The timing case needed boring out in places to clear the gears. The case is super glued to a piece of 3 8 inch rod, it held okay. Only light cuts were taken. The steel gears were supplied with a long boss, which needed facing to length. Here one is super glued to a one quarter inch rod. The toothed portion is 7 30 seconds inch, as, received. The gears are SH Muffet, 20 dp gears. Here is the cast bronze connecting rod, mounted on another of the Unimat 3 aluminium faceplates. The big end hole had been previously machined 30 years ago. Now it is the turn for the small end. Center drilling. Using the uni mat clamp. You can see the cast oil lifting spigot on the big end. The con rod has been fettled all over. Mainly with my Ryobi Dremel. Turning the cast iron cylinder. This stick was from the original material supplied with the castings. Lovely material. It cut very nicely so different from the flywheel. Boring out nearly to size, I had previously drilled it with my biggest drill, one half inch, and bored after that with power feed. That is quite a bit of overhang. Here is the finished cylinder, just about parted off. Those lines are caused by my lathe's lead screw being a little eccentric. Nice and oily after honing. One piston ring has been trial fitted. Here I am, honing the cylinder, before parting off, using a three-leg, automotive brake cylinder hone. I injected lubricating oil into the cylinder using my trusty lubricator draining syringe.
I think the lathe is running at about 300 RPM. Honing freehand with the hone running in the lathe. It is a lot easier to ensure that the hone exits both ends of the cylinder. Using this oil from the hone, I've been lapping the cylinder using this brass rod. I lapped the cylinder too, using the oil from the hone as an abrasive fluid using a piece of one inch diameter brass rod. Here's the finished cylinder and a supplied piston ring. Looking quite finished with the oil hole in the top of the connecting rod small end. The camshaft is fitted but not the gears yet. Here's the engine with the hone. making 6BA threaded sections to plug the cylinder head mounting holes in the main body casting. I did not have any suitable round stock. I loctited the end and screwed it in, then cut off the excess. Three holes needed plugging. Here we are, in the lathe, ready to face them off. Using the last of my uni mat 3 aluminium faceplates. Plugs faced off. Cylinder liner counter bore, board. Water passage cleaned up to drawing specifications. A nice operation with a very old boring tool. Cylinder liner, trial fitted. Here is the top surface of the cast piston. There is no chucking piece. The internals with gudgeon pin bosses cast in. The outside diameter rough turned to oversize. The internal diameter has been skimmed to size. This is a register for the turning jig. Setting up my scribing block base to scribe a line at center height. Spot on. Scribing a line at center height on each side for drilling the gudgeon pin, wrist pin. The scribed piston, it's hard to see. The line is scribed, hopefully, exactly at the center of the cast gudgeon pin boss. These instructions were gratefully found on the Model Engine News website. Link in description. The front face of the piston, ready for rough turning and facing. The outside diameter will be turned too. The piston has now been roughed out. It is nearly time for the finished turning jig. The piston is mounted on an angle plate on the faceplate, with counterbalance, for drilling and reaming for the gudgeon pinhole. One quarter inch diameter. Checking the alignment. This is the turning jig. It grabs the piston by the gudgeon pinhole and secures it against the register. Just by nipping it up, hand, tight. The outside diameter and end face have now been finished turned. The piston ring grooves have been cut now. Fitting the first piston ring, using the turning jig to hold it securely. Fitting the second piston ring. Here is the gudgeon pin. I drilled through under size, before casing it. Here it is with the carbon case on the outside diameter. The ends have been faced, and it has been drilled through to size, to remove the case. I only wanted the outside diameter to be hardened. I used my eBay blowtorch attachment to harden the pin in the workshop. It is a very useful blowtorch. It's like a comet streaking to Earth.
Let's plunge it into this cold water. Good blowtorch set up this one. Here it is, hardened and polished. The end caps are turned and drilled from brass, radiused, and loctited in place. The finished gudgeon pin. The piston is now in the engine. I am making a jig to transfer the holes to the cylinder head correctly. Maintaining the correct position of the combustion chamber. I will screw the jig onto the engine and the brass disc with superglue on it will be raised into contact with it. Like this. Success. It only stuck to the intended part. A drill will be passed through to get the center hole. The hole will be bored out, to pass the brass insert through. Here is the jig, with the hole drilled through from the brass piece. The hole has been enlarged to 1 inch diameter, for the brass insert. Now it is time to locate the valves, in relation to the bore and tapped holes. Setting up the jig, by centering the newly drilled valve hole. The valve insert aligned with the cylinder bore and tappings. It is now time for the second valve. The valve hole is centered with the help of the wobbler bar. The cylinder head securing holes have now been drilled in a better position, using the plate jig. Here is the cylinder head, with the existing 30 years ago machining. The holes have to be in the right position in regard to that combustion chamber counter bore. You can see the two cast spark plug bosses, for the inlet side, the choice is yours. The jig has to be the correct way up for the main body casting, and the cylinder head. Ready for drilling. All ready for the cylinder head. The holes in the jig are correct. Some holes in the cylinder head cover are not. Three of the top holes need plugging and re-drilling. You can see straight through the good holes. Aluminium slugs loctited into place. The cylinder head cover has been loctited onto the faceplate for facing off. It all worked out in the end. All the holes lined up. Drilling the intake and exhaust holes through the main casting and into the stainless steel valve housings. I had to do this in the bench drill to scribe lines and center punch locations. The carburetor parts, machined 30 years ago. It is time to finish these parts and complete the carburetor. The cylinder still has not been loctited into the main body casting yet. The timing case needed more boring out, this time for the idler gear. Here I am, clocking up the idler gear stud for final fixing. This lovely procedure is well described in the previously mentioned link in description. The timing case is now fully machined. It needed metal removing for all three gears. Filing down the mismatch between the timing case and the body casting. The body casting required quite a bit of metal removed, with a round file. Here is the carburetor drawing. These features were mostly completed 30 years ago. Here is the carburetor parts drawing. Only the throttle had been completed, so I made the rest all from lovely brass. Here is the start of the jet needle. I don't have a knurling tool, so I created a similar effect with a sideways mounted tool in the lathe. Needle tip next, as it is furthest from the chuck. This 20 degrees inclusive angle is generated by using the compound slide set over to 10 degrees. 
the finished part. The nearly complete carburetor mounted to the engine. The start of the throttle lever. Milling the flat on the end of the lever. Both holes drilled. Slitting the piece so that it might clamp the throttle rod. The carburetor is complete. The screws might change. That brass choke plate took a lot of making. In the end I printed it on paper, and pasted it to the brass sheet, and filed to the lines. The casting is uneven. The two halves of the pattern weren't perfectly aligned, so the choke plate swinging hole needed offsetting a little. The body casting is very nearly finished machined. The filler plug hole, although drilled years ago, has been tapped 3 8 inch by 32 TPI. Tapped in the bench drill to get the angle correct. The jig is pressed back into service. As valve pockets need machining, there is material in the way of the valve heads. Setting up in the four jaw chuck to get the position correct. Jig removed. It is time for some light cuts with my tiny boring tool. I smoothed out the valve pockets with the Dremel. This took a lot of to ing and fro -ing, marking the valves with marker pen to see where they were contacting the cylinder head at full valve travel. I wanted to remove as little material as possible, to preserve the compression ratio. Getting ready for the first valve timing. You can see the tall brass crankcase ventilation cap. It's a special one with a ball that vents positive pressure, but retains vacuum, as a measure to reduce oil leaks. Here we are with the inlet valve open, and spanners on the collar nut, and lock nut. These nuts were made years ago, but luckily retained. The one quarter inch AF lock nut is very thin. Luckily a 4BA spanner fitted nicely. It went well, and, some more involvement of the Dremel with the valve pockets was needed. This is to be the sump plug. It needed to be mounted flush. So I broached a 3mm AF hex into it for an Allen key. Here is the drawing for the ignition contact breaker and its parts. No work had been done on this in the past. This part needed a lot of fettling. Here is the casting mounted in the four jaw by its chucking piece. The main bore has been finished. This allows for swiveling on the over long and protruding camshaft bush. This is one of the cooling water flanges about to be superglued onto the shaft so that I can part off the excess tube and face it to length. Here we are, water inlet and outlet flanges fitted, and, brass oil filler plug fitted, it was a lovely turning job using that knurling alternative, and with the end domed. I used JB Quick Weld to fill the considerable casting mismatch. Unfortunately after curing it absorbed oil and assumed a much darker color. I experimented with some old domestic oil-based enamel, and baked it in the oven at 90 degrees Celsius for an hour. The paint took to the oily surface well. Here we are in the spray booth. I had bought a supply of steel 6BA cheesehead screws from my friend at BA Bolts, for the main fixings. These have been fitted. I found a just as old aerosol can of Mototech premium spray enamel, grey primer, under the workbench, and gave the whole engine a couple of coats, without the brassware attached. I baked the engine in the oven again at 90 degrees Celsius. The ignition bracket, and carburetor body were given two coats likewise, a few days later. Part of the original kit, the tiny NGK, ME8 spark plug. This engine will make a great industrial load for the garden railway.